I went over to work for Doug actually on a thing called Dark Ride. Uh, Doug was promoting a thing that be that was 70 millimeter negatives uh, or 65 negatives projected in 70 millimeter film, which is big negative and big print, so you get all kinds of detail. It's like the high def of, of film. Uh, and it was projected at 60 frames a second. And while I was working on that, in the same shop that everybody else was doing close encounters, uh, people noticed what I could do and what, what I was sketching and stuff. And they said, would you like to work on close encounters? I said, sure. <laughs> you know, I'd seen enough of what was going on. Uh, so I started working for Greg Jean on that. Uh, most of the big landscapes had been done before and were already in camera. Um, but there were, I think, just two landscapes that were still, that were yet to be. One of them was a forest perspective landscape. Uh, you see all these spaceships coming at you, uh, and they're mostly lights, and then flying over the compound, and then up. Uh, up the post pile, but off into the distance there was a, a night landscape with little runway lights going off in the distance. And those were all uh, forced perspective so that uh, it, it made it so the miniatures could be a lot smaller and not take up a whole stage, a big stage to do it. Uh, so I worked on that for Greg. Greg has a, a, a great sense of humor. But you've got you to gotta know when it's a propos uh, and when it's not, uh, or he'll throw a brick at you. So <laughs> yeah, there was a tight line to, uh, to walk. But uh, yeah, uh, if you worked really hard, uh, there were times that you could get around, and, and there were certain things that you could joke about, and places that you know, we'd take our lead from Greg, and, and he liked putting in little things. The original edition of Close Encounters, uh, yeah, that sort of got out of control. We were just saying, well, we'll just throw something back there. All these plastic kits, let's just start putting stuff in there. And then Dave Jones kicked it off with, because uh, he had just come off of uh, Star Wars. So he made a little R2 and stuck it in the back. And Doug happened to see it and say, oh, that's kind of cute. Let's put a light in it and put it up front. So I did a one with a little fiber optic head on it, and he stuck it on the front of the rim of the uh, one of the tiers, and then lo and behold, it's like, oh my God, you can see it. <laughs> in working on it, I put in some of the things from from my history, which had just been on on Star Wars. So uh, on all the arms that are coming out of the mothership, uh, on the end of one arm is uh, a Tie Fighter, and it's about. The wings, uh, the, the solar panel things, or whatever those are, are only about three quarters of an inch high. And the, the sphere, the central sphere of the TIE fighter, is about the size of a pea, uh, or smaller actually. I worked on some other gags that, that Greg had going on. There was a mailbox, there was a, a little uh, graveyard. Yeah, all those guys that just didn't make it through the voyages over the years, they had to be put someplace. There's a lot of different things, a little Volkswagen bus. And uh, another thing that, that uh, I found the parts for, I made a little bitty R2-D2 that's about half an inch tall, maybe five-eighths inch tall. And uh, I put that on, and I, of course I showed Greg because you want to make sure everything was, was within parameters. Uh, and he ended up taking it, and or I think he showed it to Doug Trumbull uh, or Richard Urisich, I'm not real sure now. And they liked it, so they moved it to a more, uh, a more uh, obvious position and had Greg put a light in it so that you would see it backlit uh, as kind of a silhouette of R2-D2 with, with his little blue light uh, shining. Well, it became so in vogue at the time, we just we became anti-vogue and said, let's not do anything like that. <laughs>
in a shop or on a stage filming or building or filming a model, you have a lot of people doing it. It's not like one person building one model. And um, it's much easier for people to sort of come together and see what, what's happening in front of them visually and seeing something grow and being able to contribute to it and be, sort of let that growth and that process trigger new ideas and thinking. And I just think you get so much more out of a group building a physical miniature landscape or cityscape. Back then, uh, you know, because they were sort of reinventing visual effects and trying all these new things, um, they, there wasn't any training for that. Uh, but industrial design was a, was a curriculum that uh, had a lot of visual design in it, drawing and communication skills, and um, sort of formalized problem solving, creative problem solving. Actually, guys I'd worked with on other shows would bring over bags of like details from movies they're working on and saying, you know, here's some detail parts you guys might be interested in because, you know, nobody ever recognized what they are by themselves. So we had what we called central casting. So we just like cast them all up and had a box full of stuff. It was amusing at the time to see all the little rods of aliens moving in the windows. And they were all on little, um, little rods so they could move, which is another one of those details. I don't know that any of that shows up in the final film. And I did a little bit of work on the Roy Neary puppet for that as well. That kind of became my specialty for a while. One of the things I loved to do when I was working on these films was take photos. I was always into photography. And the whole crew would love my photos, and they would, they would order copies. And a lot of them actually ended up appearing in places like Starlog and so forth. I actually still prefer the organic look of a traditional model myself, but obviously the CGI can do a lot of things that a traditional model can't. The Close Encounters of Special Edition was the king of overnighters. That I think at one point we had all pulled something like 36 straight hours on that one. That was one of those cases of nobody had uh, bothered to look at the miniatures before they were supposed to shoot and they came in 24 hours before they were scheduled to shoot the next day at 8 a.m. and said, well, that's not what we wanted at all. So you pull the overnighter, and at 8 a.m. they're still going, nah, make some more changes. So, you know, at some point you realize you've been up for 36 hours working on this. So, yeah. <laughs>